15 rounds for the middleweight championship of the world. Promoted by top rank Bob Arum, New York. The inevitable stares going on. Both fighters seemingly very relaxed as we await the start of round one of the middleweight championship. Those are the shortest instructions I've ever seen. <laughs> they know what this is about. That's right. <laughs> I notice that Hagler's sporting a beard also, isn't he? Here's the tail of the tape right here. Comparable numbers, as you see. Each man coming in right around 160 pounds. Hagler right out 160 at the firm or a pound and a quarter less. Little to choose between the two. Round one, at the firm of the challenger. He wants back what he once had. Marvin Hagler, the champion. He has what at the firm had and what he wants. Hagler will switch from lefty to righty. At the Fermo, generally speaking, will bore in. Hagler, the aggressor, early on missed with those. Hagler's best bet in this fight is stay at long range and keep on to the Fermo on the outside. I think that's possibly what he's going to do. And right away, There's a, a butt, butt, and butt on the first there occasion, a, a butt has opened the forehead right below the hairline of Vito Antifermo. And it was Antifermo who instigated the butt himself. 45 seconds into the first round. It can have an effect. It is a nasty cut. A nasty cut. It cuts right at the top of the forehead. Nothing to do with his surgery, however. Freddie Brown is yelling to the referee, Davey Pearl. Let's talk about that for a minute, Arthur. Now, what would he be saying? Well, he's telling Freddie Brown to sit down, not to come up on the ring apron, which is uh, really illegal. It could create a fine and a fine but situation. What did Brown want? What did Brown, Brown want? Brown wanted, uh, wanted Davy Pearl to look for the head. He probably thinks it was uh, the fault of Hagler on that butt. Now, Davy Pearl is going to have to make a decision on whether it was an accidental or an intentional butt. Is that not That's right? That's his decision to make. That's correct. And if the I fight winds up being called because of an accidental butt, it is a technical draw, and Marvin Hagler will retain the championship. A very, very unfortunate thing early in the fight. We expected to see a bloody fight, but we did not expect to see it for the reasons that it was caused. Uh, that was certainly an accidental butt. There wasn't deliberate on the part of anybody. It's just the style of Antifermo who comes in with his head down that way, and that's what started. Well, you hate to see a championship fight go like that this early. It happened 45 seconds into the first round. There has been not a serious punch thrown, not a punch that has done any damage. It was a butt on the first lunge, if you will, of the fight by Vito Antifermo. There's a lot of blood. I think that Hagler was equally as surprised as Antifermo when he came out and saw the blood. It's just a shame because whatever artistry there might have been in this fight will be for naught. Well, it might, uh, it might appear to be much worse than it really is. After Freddie Brown works, he'll have a better determination. It will be a frantic one minute between rounds, between the first and second round. The first round, I must say, has been an interminable three minutes. There is a lot of blood right below the hairline of Vito Antifermo. The real question is whether the blood is getting into Antifermo's eyes. The, blood, the cut is not a dangerous cut. It's whether the blood blinds Antifermo. And to this minute, you can't really say that it, would, that it affected him. Freddie Brown is saying, stop the fight. No fight. Freddie Brown is telling his man not to fight. Freddie Brown is saying, no fight. camp is trying to tell the official that Hagler butted him. They're going over to Walter Byers, who's the chairman of the Massachusetts Boxing Commission, to plead their case and maybe to try to get some extra time for Hagler. Let's see drop. See if we can hear what's going on. I don't think the fight will be stopped, however. Fight go on. That means that if they don't let the fight go on, Antifermo will be declared the loser. 
loser. That's right. That's right. That's right. But Fred, Freddie Brown is the one who insisted that the fight was over with. And the Fermo wants to fight. Well, I think now what Davy Pearl should do is clear the ring, get Freddie Brown and get that trainer out of there and get the fight going. These two fighters might now, as you see them in the middle of the ring, start fighting. yelling at the referee to get them out of the ring That's right. or else their fighter will be disqualified. I don't know if if Freddie Brown was trying to be clever and save his fighter a few minutes to give that cut a chance or not. No, or whether he was just excited and genuinely believed what he was arguing about. Yeah. I, I do believe that's true. Well, he was pretty adamant about it. Well, been able to stem the flow of blood completely from Vito Antipermo. That certainly will change Antipermo's tactics. Antipermo's just going to have to go out there and get him. There is no further blood. You'll right notice that Antipermo does lead with his head an awful lot. He's got his head up and he leads in first with his head. There was no question but that he lunged at Marvin Hagler. And when he came up, there was a nasty cut on the forehead. We then had about a two-minute debate at the start of round two, and Hagler sticks him pretty good that time. by Antifermo scores. Hagler trying to measure his man. Both fighters are going to have to get their concentration back. There had to be a lapse of concentration during that discussion. Antifermo is giving all that he can. He's just trying to do, uh, just trying to knock him out with one punch, which is really quite impossible for Zito. Well, Hagler, of course, has not lost a fight since 1976. Ironically, the two fights he did lose in 1976, the only two fights he's lost in his career, he lost within a two-month period. And blood again shows, this time under the eye, actually, of Vito Antipermo. Hagler goes after him, hits him with combinations. This has nothing to do with a butt in the first round. Another right hand scores against Antipermo, who now leans in on Marvin Hagler, the champion. Uh, Vito is totally defenseless at this point, and he's got another cut right under the, uh, the, the left eye. And now the cut from the forehead again showing blood about halfway through round two. And Hagler continues to pepper the forehead now. His forehead is not spouting blood as seriously as it did in the first round. That's very important. Freddie Brown did an excellent job of starting, stopping the flow of blood. And again, Hagler sticking that right hand on the forehead of Vito Antifermo. But while it looks like there's a lot of blood, there is not as much blood, certainly, as there was in the first round. Vito keeps coming in continually. If he would try and push, he can't because that's his style, just to back up a little bit and get a little rest. But and he Hagler, do it. Hagler effectively sticking that right hand in the face of a bloodied Vito Antifermo, who comes back now with combinations to the head and body, but not very effectively. Once again, Antifermo with two right hands. And a left hand by Hagler as he has Antifermo against the ropes. Antifermo spins away. And we come to the end of round two. Two fighters exchanging words. Not leading with his right or left. Should point out Larry Merchant, always the fashion plate here. Not to indicate that this is a bloody fight, but Larry, folks, is wearing a bib. A lobster bib. <laughs> round three in the meantime. See what a job Freddie Brown has done. Good left hand that time by Hagler. Antifermo also has a cut underneath the left eye. Hagler's jab is very effective tonight. And another good right hand right to the eye. And again, another jab. Always on the damaged area. Always on the damaged area. It may not be a pretty scene, but it is the job. It seems that Hagler... And there is a left hand that puts Antifermo down. A left hand to the forehead by Marvin Hagler put him right on his backside. Didn't seem to hurt him, seemed to stun him more than it did hurt him. He didn't seem to know where he was for a moment. That is only the third time in the career of Vito Antifermo that he has been knocked down. Twice in his last fight. And a 
again blood showing from the scalp of Vito Antifermo. Showing more in this round actually than it did in the last round. Hagler just kind of measuring his man. Hagler seems quite calm. Not excited at all. And is using a great left jab. His jab is just great. That right jab is just scoring at all times at that vulnerable cut. Hagler, who often will switch to a right-hand style, unlikely to do so in this case because all the damage is to the left side of Vito Antifermo's face. So you would have to think he would likely stay with that right jab. And coming in underneath the defense that time and staggering Antifermo once again is Marvin Hagler. Again, Antifermo coming at his man, trying to smother him. There is blood on Hagler now, too, but it is from Antifermo. And Hagler again peppering his man two, three, four times to the face of Vito Antifermo. It just seems to be too much head contact, if you'll notice, when on the inside. And now blood flowing freely again from the forehead of Vito Antifermo. And most of that really is still being done with the head, not with the fists. Hitting on the break, apologizing to Marvin to uh, Vito Antifermo. To say that Vito Antifermo is game would be to make a great understatement. Yeah, he is uh, a mauling, brawling type of fighter who never, never gives up. He's, he's just very brave in that. I think we mentioned earlier he has been cut in every fight that he's had, with one exception, and that was a fight that he lost in a 15 round decision. Let's take a look at the knockdown here. After using his jab, Hagler had. had had Antifermo very jab conscious and he came across with the left hand. There's a jab right over the eye. It's a good straight jab, a right jab. That one was a little bit lower under the eye. And obviously Antifermo has to be very conscious and there was a left hand, a short straight left hand as Antifermo was looking again for that right jab. Here it is from another angle, I believe. There's the right hand over the eye, the right under the eye. And now watch that left hand, a straight left hand. And I think having seen it now, it looked like he caught Anafermo coming in and a little bit off balance. It wasn't a devastating blow. And obviously for the rest of the round, there, didn't, there weren't any serious effects on Anafermo. As we said, it seemed to just stun him more than it did hurt him. I don't think I've ever seen a fighter like Anafermo who, who went further with his will and so little skill. I don't think there's any question about it. The first round, but of course, having a profound effect on the fight, although right at this juncture of the fight, you would have to say that it's Marvin Hagler's fight regardless. The blood really has not so much gotten in the eyes of Vito Antifermo. And Marvin Hagler, if you notice, is boxing a lot now. He's uh, from the outside coming in, and as we said before, jabbing and jabbing and coming across with that effective left. Looks as though there could be a little bit of a cut on the brow now, the left eye of Vito Antifermo too, although that may just be blood from the top of the head. This fight is beginning to resemble a fight I saw many years ago, the second Sugar Ray Robinson Basilio fight, in which Basilio's left eye looked like a gargoyle. It was closed early on. Well, you saw that right hand by Marvin Hagler, and Antifermo now is cut under the right eye. Antifermo is being beaten to the punch at all times. He just won't. Stay on the outside. He must get on the inside. And the blood really showing actually from under the right eye of Antif Antifermo even more than the cut from the butt. It is well under the right eye alongside the bridge of the nose actually. Antifermo also has a swelling now around the right eye. It's kind of black and blue down below this hip. And bleeding from below that. Yeah. What had happened before the operation with Antifermo was that he actually bled internally first, and then of course the blood had no place to go, so it cut much easier. That was the reason he had that operation in the first place, was to smooth out. I think he's opened it now. The supraorbital ridge above his eyes. Yes. How's that for yeah. a non-doctor? You know your anatomy quite good, don't you, Barry? <laughs> don't you believe it, I read books. <laughs> My mother still wants me to be a doctor. Not too late. Got to have something to fall back on when you're in this business. Once again, Marvin Hagler forcing the action here and really having it all his own way. 
And now Antifermo comes back a little bit. Antifermo fighting on guts, there's no question. And the most blood now, ironically, on Antifermo shows from the right side of his face, which was not the side of his face that was damaged early on. Antifermo takes so many punches just to get one to two in. Once again. It looks like another headbutt. Oh, now Antifermo seemed headbutt. to deliberately butt him. And now Hagler gets the warning, and more blood shows from now the right brow of Vito Antifermo. It is not pretty. End of round four. Looking at Antifermo, very definitely, the ridges over his eyes that used to spring leaks all the time have receded. But as I said earlier, he's now springing leaks from every place else. Yeah. Although he does have a cut, I can see right now, he's got a three or four inch gash over his right eye, and that's the cut that can end the fight. Right there, you can see them trying to treat that cut over his right eye. That's the one that can end the fight. And once again, there is a discussion raging. Freddie Brown has been arguing with Davey Pearl. And again, Freddie Brown says the fight is over, and Davey Pearl says the fight should go on. Well, the Freddie Brown, I heard him say disqualify him, meaning Hagler, disqualify Hagler. They ought to leave it up to the fighter at this point. And now you heard Davey Pearl said he quits. Marvin Hagler's hand is raised. Vito Antifermo does not like it. is a fight once again. There was controversy coming into the fight. There was controversy after the fight. There is a lot of booing going on. Robert Hagler dances. It is Robbie Sims, his brother. Steve Wayne right around him. Let's take a look again. Just 45 seconds into the fight, here is what happened. That's a promo on the right now. He'll lunge and he'll hit the side of the head right there. That's it. You can see him just jolt his head back. And right there, you can see the blood start to form already. Vito feels it, knows he's been cut, puts the glove to the head, and for all intent and purpose, that was really the end of the fight. That's right. You look at the winner, Marvin Hagler. To Larry Merchant, who was with the winner, Marvin Hagler. Okay, Marvin, how did you see what happened in the first round? Well, you see in the first round, the promo comes straight at me with his head. That was his own fault. He knows that he's uh, uh, vulnerable to cuts and everything like that. It seemed like he would have tried to keep away or whatever instead of ramming straight on with his head. You're not suggesting that he did it deliberately. He was just leading with his head. No, he was. And in our first fight, that's what he done here. But I'm glad that we had a great referee today that was very aware of everything. And uh, he watched the butts. He watched the holdings and everything. So I felt very confident there. At least I had a good referee in there. And I just wanted to, I really wasn't loosening up yet. I was just starting to put things together. What did you think of all of the furor that was going on in his quarter with Freddie Brown? Brown apparently wanted the fight stopped on a technicality, and meanwhile he was giving Ed DeFermo a chance to heal. Sure. Well, you know, I think that they did come in with some of that stuff on top of his head. I don't know what they were using, but it's kind of dangerous to another fighter because that stuff gets in my eyes, and which it did. I went back to my corner, and he wiped it out of my eyes. It's kind of bad. It blinds a fighter. Uh, once the fight continued, were you deliberately going for that cut? It did not appear to no, be in a I dangerous to place. Out. I was just putting my punches together, which you see me just starting to loosen up, putting my combinations together. I felt like I was a little tight in the beginning, but I knew that this guy wasn't the same fighter that I fought back there in 79 because he was much too easy and he, he gave me, I moved, had a little bit more distance. Like I said, after that fight there with Antifermo the first time, I went back to school. What did Antifermo say to you at the end? First of all, I just want to say that Antifermo helped me buy my mother right there a house. And I want to say thank because it's her birthday, June 17th, and that house will be hers. What did he say to you at the end? Well, he wants another rematch or whatever like that. Hey, it's not fair way how things have to end that way, but hey, in this game, everything counts. So uh, Where it wasn't go? fair the way they took it from me in the draw either. Where do you go from here? Is Ham Show, it seems to be the only middleweight I'm who leaving. has earned a clear shot at you. If we can make big money the way that I want to make the money, a million dollars or more, I know that gladly we'll take the fight. Yeah. 
What about all the welterweights that seem they, like, like they can't wait to get a shot at you? Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Wilfredo Benitez. That's good. If I was a weak champion, they would have been on top of me sooner. But I'm a strong champion. I just want to concentrate on this division, bring the respect back to the middleweight division. And if Sugar Ray Leonard or Tommy Hearns want to move up into my division, come on, fella, because I'm looking for a big payday. When, we, when you were at ringside with us at HBO for the Sugar Ray Leonard fight, you took a look at Leonard for four or five rounds and you said, I think he should stay as a welterweight. Yeah, I do feel that way. I still feel that way. Uh, I think that all the titles should be combined. I am the true 100% champion, and I do like that because I have both belts. And uh, I feel very happy today, Larry. Well, unfortunately, we wanted you to take a look at our, at our monitor. Maybe we can bring up that headbutt if we can roll our tape here so that you well, can take a look at exactly what happened in the fight. But that butt was very accidental. I remember that because I was going down looking for a body shot. I think th this is the second butt of the fight, Marvin. Would you, would you tell us what you see here? I'm trying to use a straight, there it is right there. I was going down for the body, which is a good combination. You use a straight right jab and then you go under with the body shot. And he was coming down at the same time I was and that's how the head butt collided. But at that time, the official warned you. Let's take a look at it again. Yeah, but you can see right, that now, I was now we're gonna, punch. Now we're going to take a look down. at the knockdown. You were jamming him just before the knockdown. That was a beautiful shot there, dead on the money. He never knew what happened. He was down on that one. That, that came quick. Even myself, I didn't know it was out there. Now, came quick. Now, in the first fight, he, you dominated the first half of the fight, and he came back later. Were you I concerned? I wasn't going to let that happen this time. I wasn't going to let it happen. I knew I could get him in the earlier rounds. I was just starting to put things together. I figured with a little bit more, the referee had to stop this fight. This is a very serious game, and people get seriously hurt. If the blood's got in his eyes or something where he couldn't see, I could have maybe damaged him real bad. To myself, I really didn't care because I want to swat that mosquito. Thank you very much, Marvin Hagler, and back to Barry at ringside. Okay, thank you, Larry, and the middleweight champion, still the middleweight champion, Marvin Hagler. Let's get the official word right now from Nuno Cam. Ladies and gentlemen, Referee stops the bout, the fifth round, the winner by a TKO, and still...